from ISTE's international conference that's held every year, we host, um, as EdTech Coaches PLN, we host a playground at the conference. And so um, this year as a leadership team, we decided that we would choose some folks um, who had really popular playground sessions to essentially present that playground session again through a webinar series throughout the year because we know that not everyone gets a chance to travel to the conference location um, at all. And then when you're there, there's so much going on, you don't always get a chance to stop by every session. So um, our first one was actually last month. Tonight we have Charles Randolph. Um, and then our next um, webinar will be November 8th with Kitty Tripp uh, screencasting. January 10th, we'll have Leslie Fagan and Robin Harris. Leslie's here with us tonight, so that's exciting to have another presenter um, on Becoming a Google Ninja Master, Online Professional Development for Teachers, February 14th. Um, if you're like me and you don't really celebrate Valentine's Day, uh, you can join me and we can all be together. Uh, Jackie Wiseman and Nicole Robinson sending out an SOS. Uh, March 14th, Alyssa DeVito, Many Teachers, One Coach. April 11th will be Carla Jefferson, Regina Schaefer, and Patricia Brown on Twitter and Boxer and Slack. Oh my, social media for PD. So um, all of you are here probably because you went to that bit.ly slash etc webinars to register but if any of those future webinars sound interesting to you um, please visit that link again and Greg or myself will share that link in the chat with you as well so you can get signed up for future webinars too And before I introduce Charles and we get started with tonight's webinar, I do want to make sure that everybody knows um, where to connect with us outside of these webinars and beyond the um, ISTE conference in the summertime. So in ISTE Connects, uh, that bit.ly link on that very first link, bit.ly slash ET Coaches PLN, will take you to sort of our home base in the ISTE Adobe Connects area on Twitter. Our official Twitter handle is at EdTechCoaches, and our official hashtag is ETCoaches. So please feel free to share about all of your great learning tonight in this webinar and keep the conversation going there throughout the week. Uh, we also have a Google Plus group if you're into that. We have a, a pretty active Voxer group, um, and we have a Remind group to send out reminders for um, the chat and for our webinars and everything. Um, just a couple of housekeeping rules for the webinar. Um, you will stay muted. Please feel free. Our webinars with our EdTech coaches, uh, people are usually pretty active in the chat area. So please feel free, share your ideas with each other in the chat, any questions that you have. Um, the webinar is going to be the, the actual content uh, that Charles is going to present from teacher to instructional technology coach. It's going to be about 30 minutes, and then the second half of the hour, uh, the, the second half 30 minutes, is going to be open for Q&A and some discussion. So um, any ideas that you have, um, um, anything that Charles can answer for you. Um, so please feel free to utilize that. So now, like I've been promising, um, I will introduce Charles Randolph, our awesome presenter here tonight. Uh, Charles has over 10 years of experience as an instructional technology coordinator for Arlington Public Schools. During that time, he has worked directly with students, teachers, and administrators to infuse 21st century instructional technology skills in the classrooms and schools. Charles has also supported school and countrywide deployments and professional development initiatives. He is a current member of ISTE and uh, Virginia's ISTE VSTE educational technology organizations and has served as a lead high school instructional technology coordinator for Arlington Public Schools. He's a certified Apple education trainer and ETLO or certified online facilitator. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Charles and we will get started right away. Good. Good evening, everybody. Uh, hopefully everybody's having a happy Tuesday. Um, this is Charles Randolph, your friendly neighborhood instructional technology coordinator 
also AKA Instructional Technology Coach. Um, as you can see, and thank you for joining this wonderful webinar, we're going to talk a little bit, or I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, going from a teacher to an instruction, instructional technology coach. And as you can see in the title where it says, Ed Tech Coaches, Be a Lifesaver. Um, if you're dealing with instructional technology and working in a wonderful school, you are already a lifesaver and also a superhero because you do some things in your schools that people think are above and beyond your regular day and you are always constantly trying to learn or improve yourself and not just yourself but your students your teachers your admin and also your community so you're already a lifesaver so i appreciate you joining um, us wonderful edtech coaches tonight and hello as you can see at the bottom with my wonderful shimmy at the bottom it has here my information which you'll see later on at the end of the slide but if you have any questions i am definitely on twitter and you can follow me at charles randolph the number three take off the h and my hashtag for some of my pd tips i put on twitter is hashtag charles randolph pd as we started with the intro from miss katie thank you very much uh to just to go through a brief history of my Self. I am an instructional technology coordinator, ed tech coach for the past 10 years. Believe it or not, 10 years has flew by very quickly and very fast. Prior to 10 years ago, there was no such thing as an iPad or a Chromebook. So as we talk about some of the level of your increased knowledge and skill set, just kind of think about for a minute the amount of technology that's changed just in the last couple of years. I am a teacher also. I have taught family consumer science in Maryland and Virginia. For my old school veteran teachers, yes, that is home economics. I have a home economics degree, AKA the new version is family and consumer science. And I taught um, culinary cooking, and I also taught early childhood education, which exposed me a lot to the world of technology. I am a certified family consumer science teacher, and school counselor got my master's degree from trinity university in washington dc which i will go back and forth a lot about using counseling skills and tricks to help with work with students teachers and especially my wonderful admin i am a certified um etlo edtech leader online facilitator which means i can help with online courses if needed to and I've been instructional technology coordinator at Drew Model Elementary School and the Arlington Career Center, which is currently my location in Arlington, Virginia. Question, who are you? You have been teaching for years and now you are an ed tech coach or a teacher, or you wanna be. What kind of skills do you think you're gonna need or why do you even want to deal with EdTech? EdTech is constantly changing. It's a constant new skill coming up. And really, who are you? I am Spider-Man. Why do I pick this wonderful Spider-Man photo? It's because you really are a superhero for what you do in your schools, as I stated at the beginning of the presentation. You need to think of yourself as being dynamic, different, and as a superhero, there's always an adventure, a plot, and an issue that you have to solve. And not everybody can solve this issue. That takes a certain personality, a certain person, to choose to deal with ed tech and work in schools. You can't be uptight, can't be too serious. You have to be very fluent and open. So think about your superhero characteristics. Teacher to ed tech. Now, reading and glancing at some of the information before session started, people started putting in the chat information. What is the process from becoming a teacher to an ed tech coach? One of the first topics you need to think about. What are your goals 
for your school and your school system once you become an ed tech coach. You, this is key. You have to have a little bit of insight and understanding as far as where your school currently is and where your school is going in the future in relationship to educational technology. The reason why I say this, you have to be able to think about if you are getting a particular software or hardware today, right now, you have to think about it. Is that software going to be feasible and usable in the next two to three years? As you know, if you've been a teacher for any amount more than a year, whatever you use today, it could possibly be obsolete within a year or two. Second option or bullet, what skills do you have as an ed tech slash instructional coach? What are your skills? And this is when you have to do some self-reflecting on yourself, meaning do you have skills in which are you a good communicator? Are you a good research person? Meaning can you read a lot of information, process it and make a good, meaningful call? Are you good at conflict resolution? There is nothing worse than having to go into a classroom and you don't have any kind of issue, any kind of idea about what topic or problem they have. AKA, if you've been teaching for a couple of years, think about the first time you walked into a classroom. You didn't know what kind of kids you were going to come up upon. You didn't know personalities. You didn't know if they had any attitudes. You didn't know the strengths and weaknesses. So you have to be able to say as an ed tech coach, same kind of concept. What kind of technology skills will I have or will I also need? Which goes into my third statement of bullet. What skills do you need to be an ed tech um, also instructional coach? Uh, do you need Microsoft Office skills? Do you need Apple skills? Do you need Google skills? Do you know how to do you need skills on learning how to use a particular device? Is it a PC based platform um, operating software? Is it a Mac operating software? Is it Chrome? These type of skill sets is what you're going to need in order to think about, hey, will this work or will it not work? Um, and again, you have to be open to change and flexible. Now, right here, you see, I have a little clip. I'm going to drag this over so you can see it. Title, Greatest American Hero. While this is playing, I'm going to tell my age a little bit. Uh, this was a television show from the 1980s. Look at what's happened to me. I can't believe it myself. Suddenly I'm up on top of the world. It should have been somebody else. Believe it or not. Now, believe it or not, the premise about this show was the fact that a teacher Yes, I said it. A teacher wound up in the desert and found a particular suit. And what did the suit do? The suit gave him superpowers. The great thing about the suit was it had powers. But interesting factor about the plot of the story was he did not have the directions to use the suit. He dropped it. So you have a school teacher in, I believe, in a, um urban town, urban city, a teacher, all the knowledge, all the skill sets, but didn't know how to use the suit. So the premise of the whole show was the teacher had to learn how to use the suit in various situations, which is the same thing for ed tech. You don't ever know how to use any kind of technology at first. You have to teach yourself how to use it. Um, I laugh for watching that show hundreds of thousands of times and it didn't hit me until my teaching years that he was a teacher. And that happens a lot with us. We have a lot of skills that we have to learn, we have to review, have to constantly change. Um, for those who use um, Apple products, um, iOS 10 just came out a few weeks ago. Guess what? As soon as you learn iOS 10, then there's an update. Or a year from now, there'll be an iOS 11. We constantly have to change on how we're using different software, different applications. So. That was one of the TV shows I love to watch. Good reflection on one that the greatest American hero was and is a teacher. Now we're on to our next slide. It's the standards for coaches. 
if you haven't had a chance, this is on the ISTE website. This is a great resource or tool. Highly recommend that in your methodology or your pedagogy in which you are starting to make or kind of form yourself into an instructional um, ed tech coach or coordinator or teacher, review some of these standards and kind of just highlighting some of these standards or looking at them is basically a, a visual leadership. You have to be very strong, very confident in the fact that your vision, taking all the bits and pieces from your students' perspective, your teachers' perspectives, um, your county, and even your state perspective, you have to be visionary, which being visionary means sometimes you're going to have to do your research, you're going to have to review, you're going to have to study, and also, too, you're going to take just a big leap and say, I got this ready. I'm ready to try this. Um, thank you for those who already put up the, the wonderful standards. That's great. Um, we appreciate that. Now, also, too, you have your teaching, learning, and assessment. This is when your teaching, your learning, and assessment tools come into play. Um, as a teacher, I've done this. I've tried something. And, of course, you know you've been practicing for days, weeks, even months. You get into the classroom, and it doesn't work. Meaning, you can have this wonderful technology presentation ready to go, and then your school, the Wi-Fi drops. If you have ever been in that situation, what you got to do? You got to go with a plan B and a plan C. Meaning, did you have your content downloaded to your computer? Do you have it on the uh, mobile device? But you have to be very flexible. The learning part. Right now, you're doing this webinar. Appreciate you being here. This is some of the learning. You have to communicate and reach out to other people. Um, the wonderful Ed Coaches uh, Twitter has been beneficial for me because I get to learn a lot and I get to talk to other people and bounce ideas off of them. Professional development. You have to make sure that you are getting your constant professional development. Not just that you're providing it, but also that you're getting professional development. As we stated, technology changes, educational concepts change. So you have to make sure that you are getting development for yourself. Plus, also what I call, you have to be able to um, educationally steal or get some concept ideas from other people. This only happens when you go out and go to professional development conferences like ISTE, um, hanging out on the chats and doing some of the webinars. Other portion of the coaches um, is the wonderful guide is again professional development and also program evaluation. You have to be able to evaluate programs or activities that are at your school and at other schools. Um, going to ed camps, um, ISTE chats and reviewing how things are working, not working, and having, again, going back to the vision part. Will you have the vision to say, okay, I want to take this idea, this concept, and I want to use it in a classroom. I want to use it with my administration. I want to use it at my school. Um, remember, with your administration, some of your administration have not been in a classroom teaching in some years, even in some cases, some decades. So, how are you going to get your admin team aboard with using the technology or the ed tech skills that you plan on using? Digital citizenship, uh, instructing your students and also a big stress on the teachers using the technology correctly and in an educational way that is safe and meaningful to the students and to themselves. Um, learning if you copy something off the web, do you cite it? Do you um, communicate it well? And also showing the students, hey, this is social media. This is the impact it has right now and in the future. Um, I work in, as I stated, Arlington, Virginia. We have to constantly remind students about what you put on the web could impact you in the future, especially with the location I am with all the government locations, State Department, and items like that. Content knowledge and professional growth. We already said this. I already said it too. Making sure that whatever you take, you are constantly learning. Um, if you are a true educator, which I fully believe that you are, if you are here at this wonderful webinar, you love professional growth. I imagine many of you are the type of wonderful teachers, ed, ed tech coaches, instructional technology coordinators, 
that love to learn. I admit there are many times I have a hard time sleeping because once I hear or see or learn or hear about something new, I am enjoying that case of learning how it works to the point I can't stop. I just love learning because I want my students to learn. I want my teachers to learn. Why did you become an ed tech teacher slash coach? Let me just, I have a video for you. Let me drag this over. You said what? Do you see the sky? Now, for that video clip just that I played for you, that was uh, a young lady, young student, who was using Ocular Rift VR goggles. Um, and this is when you have to pretty much love the fact of technology and instructional technology. Now, this young lady right here, probably guessing is probably about maybe about five, maybe six years old. When you work with students like this, you are envisioning that this student is going to get older, going to get smarter in a full immersed education of using educational technology. So this is when you have to expose them at a young point and also at an older point with the technology. And you have to also remember this is supposed to be fun and educational. It has to be fun. If you're not having fun in ed coaching or edu instructional technology coaching, you shouldn't be doing it because every day is going to be different. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be challenging. And in some days you're going to put your head down or a moment you go put your head down and then you just have to pretty much be like a superhero as we stated in the beginning and be ready to go for your next challenge. This is the case where I love seeing students, young children using technology in a young way. She said with the VR goggles on, I feel like I'm about to fall off. You have to love that because this young lady stayed on this device um, for almost six minutes straight and was amazed at the fact that she could see the whole world through her VR goggles. What is your EdTech philosophy, goal, or role? Now, this is when it will be, you'll be locked into a certain role or you will be constantly changing or fluid pretty much like water. Meaning, the way you see yourself today may not be the way you see yourself in a week, a month, may not be even a few years. Is your philosophy going to be one-to-one -one PD? Now, in some cases, some schools, if you're in a smaller school system, this may be your best way to teach. If you're at a school that only has two to 300 students, um, this may be great. Or even if you're at a school that has a thousand students or staff members that may be 100 to 150, 200, one-to-one -one PD is great. You just have to know how you're going to use uh, that approach. Group PD. Group PD works out wonderfully also. It brings teachers with a common focus, a common goal together to work on a particular topic or learn a skill. Uh, you have to be able to have one, have your topic ready, your presentation together for your professional development. And also to make sure that everything's going to work before you do your PD session, just like a teacher. Nothing worse than you walk into a school and the projector doesn't work. OK, well, what you're going to do? Countywide PD. This means you may be working with a large group, small group, or one-to-one -one group, depending on how you're going to do the countywide PD or professional development. This PD will also be asking you to do, you know, multiple times. If you do a presentation today, will you be able to copy that exact same presentation if you have to do it tomorrow or you have to do it repeatedly again the following week? Research and development. If you would like to do research and also development, R&D for short, is great. You have to do research. Before you use a particular tool or device, 
um, and even implement it with a teacher. Remember, teachers at a certain point when you are the coordinator or coach, they are just like the students. They want to make sure it works. They want to make sure they can understand how to use it. And also they want to make sure that it makes sense to them. So this is when the research part comes up. Before you can say teachers are going to use a different or a particular software or application, you're going to have to test it. Uh, highly recommend that you test it in all kinds of scenarios with um, internet Wi-Fi, without internet Wi-Fi. Uh, will it play on a PC device? Will it play on a Mac device? Will it play on a Chromebook? Because different options or different scenarios have come up. Curriculum development. This is when you're going to have to meet or even decide upon yourself. Um, is the EdTech instructional technology going to work with the curriculum that your school system, your county, and even your state has selected? Um, I don't know about your, about your school or school system, but I know it's times when we have our curricular department um, may pick a particular software or application, and then they say we're going to go with it, pick it, and, but they haven't really talked to the instructional technology coordinators or coaches to see if this software is going to work on the devices. Um, so you have to kind of like look at that and say, is it going to work or not work? That's a skill set communication comes into play. This is another video I have for you right here. And this is one that energizes me all the time. Drag that over. Here today at the RT Career Center. I'm just looking for a good technology job right now because I'm into tech and I found a lot of good spots right now. And what kind of job will you be having this summer? I got a job as an intern for um, information services. And are you excited? I'm very excited. And why are you excited? Because I love technology. Student right there said he loved technology. That's a student I've worked with at my school. Funny enough, since I worked with him, he was at an elementary school, and now he's at a high school uh, career in tech. And from the technology point, he's gone from a younger child to now almost a late teen, almost an adult, graduating pretty soon, and got an internship. So the fact that he said he loved technology, this is a student who's working with Raspberry Pi, I mean Raspberry Pi computers, Adrenos, and using different skill set, but with myself and the teachers and administration, you have to work with the student to say, what interests him and what kind of skill set does he have? And what we need to um, work on with the student. And having a different mindset will work pretty good on how you're going to juggle your different philosophies, uh, different programs, different methods you have to use with your students. This is when personalized learning, blended learning works into play with the students and with your teachers. If you have or if you're at any kind of school, meaning your school may have young teachers as far as first year teachers and then you may have veterans all the way up to 35 40 plus years in education my mom was a teacher years ago first grade and i never forgot my mom said she was going to retire when the school system said that they were going to give her a desktop that's when she retired and said i'm done and i had to kind of nurture her and said no it's not a problem but she said no i'm done i've gone from copying uh paper with fluid liquid to now they want to give me a computer so that's you have from new teachers to your veteran teachers and the same thing with your administration. Your teachers, that's how we're going to the next slide. With your teachers, you have to be able to know what is their skill set. If your teacher's skill set or is this skill set going to be very high technology needs, meaning they're going to need help with everything that's relating to application software, um, computers, or do you have some very high functioning teachers that you can give them any kind of application resource and they're just going to roll with it? What type of devices are your teachers currently using and maybe using in the future? Laptops, desktop, mobile devices. This is a hot topic right here because what your school picks now can change within two to three years. Um, I have seen school systems go from desktop meaning standalone devices they just stay in one place 
and common use to now a lot of school systems are selecting personalized devices. So with their personalized devices, what's going to work best for your school, your philosophy that you're going to have to work on. Uh, also, too, you need to remember that whatever you pick now could and more than likely will change if you plan on being a coach for, for the years to come, which you will. Who are your strong and weak edtech technology teachers? Constantly assessing, constantly being motivated. Whoever you use today or study today and help your teachers out means that some teachers may say they're weak, but they're actually very strong. Another teacher may say that they're very strong and may be weak with using edtech tools or edtech skills. So this is when you're going to have to be assessing. What are your strengths as a edtech coach? Great communication skills. Can you communicate to the student, the parent, the teacher, administration, and even surprisingly school board members about your philosophy and concepts? And at any moment, be able to handle a situation or a crisis. Able to make decisions in the moment. As I said, if you're if you have a situation where your interactive whiteboard, smart board bulb goes down, how are you going to prep your teachers to handle that kind of crisis? Because some teachers, if that happens, all instruction stops. Guess what? It really can't. This is when you need to have some type of skill set or a case of learning what needs to happen in that moment. And a lot of this is just talking to your teachers, let them know it's going to be okay. They've been teaching for years or for months. They have a plan. Able to make decisions for the future. Keep talking about this. Keep bringing it up. How are you going to plan for the future? Like I said, everything happens. Everything changes. Uh, Smart watches have been out just about over two years now. And now you're talking about kids being able to access testing, text, website, all kind of information on that. Two years ago, that wasn't there. How are you going to plan for that? Virtual reality coming up right now, working in the midst of it. How is education going to be in the next five to 10 years? We're talking about sending um, students and children will be the next or be the first people to go to Mars by 2030. So envision the fact that you are working with future astronauts that will be going to Mars with the skills that you're teaching them and technology. Are you good at researching new technology? Again, going back to it, don't be scared or nervous about trying new technology in the classroom. Find those teachers who want to beta test, test it. That's what's going to help them out. And once they start using it, that's going to spread to the other teachers. What are your weaknesses as an ed tech coach? I'm going to be truthful with you. One of my weaknesses is time management. Being able to isolate and be realistic with a teacher or student or administration to say, I can work on a problem for so much time, then I'm going to have to pretty much pocket it, put it in some kind of container, and then be able to either come back to it or this is when you got to work with this team con team concept and say, I may have to forward this to somebody else who has a skill set in fixing this. Uh, time management, never enough time, and also being realistic to yourself as far as knowing when to stop. Uh, my earlier days as an ed tech coach, I think I pretty much would put in almost 12 um, to 11 hour days. Then I had a couple of veteran ed tech coaches tell me that I was uh, losing my mind and I was going to be burnt out within a couple of months. Guess what? You burn out because you have to know when to take a break. You have to know when to take your lunch. You have to know even at those times to say have have what I call a happy place. Uh, there is always a location at every school when people say, you know what? This is my favorite place to hang out with. Have fun. Trying to save the world. That's their superhero complex. It's a good complex, but you have to know you're going to try to save the world every day. You're going to try to save your classes every day and all your teachers. But be realistic that, well, I may need to stop trying to save the world for a few minutes and come back to it. 
uh, even Superman and all the wonderful superheroes, Iron Man and all them, have friends. This is when you're going to need to come back to them. Who is the focus group every day at your school? Is it going to be the students? Is it going to be your teachers and counselors and admin? Is it going to be your parents? Guess what? Every day you go to school, it can be all of them and more. EdTech coaches and instructional technology coaches supporting students, teachers, parents, and administration everyday needs. Oh, okay, that's how you... You're running my shot. Come on. <laughs> Video right here is just a couple of students during my, what I call my genius lunchtime break for technology right, so for the right, students. Right, go go. And stop, as you can stop, see, we're flying a drone go. inside oh, the building. And this is when I pretty much like to do my outreach to my come student back. population come back. and kind of interact with back. the students and show them some of the different technology. Because when you're in a classroom, sometimes oh. teachers don't have time for them. So you have to kind of figure out your different options to come outreach out. to the there students you and you're also to the teachers. No, you're fine. It's him. Don't blame him on me. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. Rotate. Yo, yo, what's up? What's up? And also, too, it's fun. <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, you're going too far off. All right, emergency land. Emergency land. Uh, no, emergency emergency land. And this is when thinking out the box is <laughs> pretty fun. I done did it. Okay. Now you got to so. Now you have to be able to outreach all the students. And this is not my particular program with robotics, but I have a robotics teacher that I have to assist him with putting the software on the, comp on the computers, the iPads and working with students. And let's see here. Now, teamwork, as we talking about and going with. Oh, I had a question right here. Uh, let's see, what is, it, one of, what is the name of the drone? That was a Parrot drone. Um, you can look at that on Amazon and some other places but that is a parrot, indoor drone, and outdoor drone. Um, best instructional technology coordinators in the world. Good job. Uh, this is some of the wonderful ITCs. We call them instructional technology coordinators, and tech coaches that I've worked with in Arlington. Um, we work as a team. Uh, all, everybody has different skill sets, and this is when we relate, and this is when you need that partnership. You cannot work uh, individually as an EdTech coach, even if you're in an area that you don't have a lot of resources to, you can get online, you can get on chats. It's a team effort. Trust me, we're teachers. If you do not know how to answer or to solve a particular EdTech or um, instructional technology question, somebody will help you. Also, you see the photo at the top right uh, with students. Don't forget that we're here for the students. So having that passion, that fun, it, you need that wonderful energy to get from the students. Um, I love working with my early childhood students at my school because my school we have as far as um, or as young as two year old or two week old students or two year old babies all the way up to um, young adults. So we have a full spectrum at my program. And the photo I have right over here at the bottom right hand corner, two of my veteran just retired um, instructional technology coordinators uh, that just retired as I stated combined they had almost 50 years of wonderful instructional technology coordinating meaning they've seen from one single desktop in a school to now going to three to five to eight hundred devices at a school so you need those veteran instructional technology coordinators because they can tell you the past where things or how things were going in the past and how things are now. Reach for, reach up for the stars. Who you are, 
Don't let them hold you down. Reach out for these stars. You have that girl, but not that name. Cause you're the only one that will give it your You know very well. Hold you up. Don't let them hold you down. Reach out for these stars. If you have that girl, but not that name. Cause you're the only one. If you don't know now, you know. Just a little motivation right there. Just saying pretty much reach up for the stars because you pretty much have to be happy at what you're doing all the time. Be happy being an ed tech coach and supporting each other. I uh, just wanted to say that's the end of the wonderful slide presentation portion. And thank you, thank you uh, for participating um, with the presentation. I know we covered a lot of information in this, but hopefully this gives you some viewpoints, some ideas on some future ed tech or instructional tech um, teaching that you may want to do or that you are doing. Um, we're all in the same boat, all in the same team. So you have to be able to reflect a lot and get a lot of help from each other. Again, there go my uh, Twitter information and we'll make sure we'll put that out for you again. But um, Charles Randolph, take off the H, put a three on it. And now we are at the portion of our wonderful questions. Uh, if you have any questions, this would be a good time to put it out there and let's talk. All right. Thank you for the wonderful team. I'll go through some of the questions that we have. Do you think a blended philosophy of providing PD works best? I use a variety of methods posted um, based on the skills set and the needs of the staff. Yes, uh, blended PD or professional development, I am a strong believer in. One-to-one uh, -one works great for those wonderful teachers or staff members who are nervous about the tech or need or do better with that one-to-one -one contact. Uh, some teachers are just like students. They get intimidated in large settings. Uh, so they may not ask the type of questions they want to ask, or they're a little nervous to try something. I have found small group works out the best for me or one-to-one, -one, particularly small group. And if you're going to do a group, I recommend no more than about 20 if you can. Um, when you get over 20, it's hard to really work with uh, everybody's individual needs. Uh, another question we have here, how do you assess the skill levels of your teachers prior to delivering PD? Uh, I use sometimes or I use a Google form and I will assess the teacher on a particular or teachers on a particular skill set. So example, if I'm going to show teachers how to use iMovie, I may create a Google form and just ask teachers real quick. Um, have you ever used or created an iMovie before? Have you ever made an iMovie on an iPad or have you made an iMovie on a Mac device? Um, if I'm doing another assessment, I may just t have teachers come up and tell me or when we do my presentation, how many have used Microsoft Office or any kind of suite to it. So sometimes it's a formal form that I may ask. I've also posed questions to teachers on uh, Twitter and asked them because remember, Twitter does have a polling factor. So you could use that to assess. And do you have the form you send out? Um, I will see if I can find that form and or a question like that from a form and see if I can put it up in the chat. Uh, next question we have here. Is your PD mostly training on how to use devices, programs, or something else? How do you determine? I determine it based off a lot of observation for my professional development. And also is when teachers just ask. Um, I had a teacher just last week who is stressing over managing his calendar. Um, he's a teacher and he has multiple classrooms and also meetings that he has to attend like we all do. So he came up to me and said, Charles, can you please do a training on how to utilize um, the camera? I mean, a calendar feature. 
in Outlook and also on my device. I said, not a problem. So that's one I'll work on, prepare that form probably by next week. Um, observing is a key point because you have to see where teachers are having stresses or issues on and you would say, hmm, what kind of solution can I come up to help the teachers um, for that key point? And also programs and software, same thing. You just have to be able to observe and see. Some of this may come from a need from the top, meaning your administration may say, hey, we want to do this with the teachers. We need this kind of skill set. You need to provide training on how to do A, B, C, D. It also may come from the county as far as above from the curriculum department. How you're going to work with that team and plan on it is going to be your strength as far as how you're going to deploy it. Another question we have here, do other tech coaches do observations? If so, what are you looking for and for looking for when you're in the classroom? Yes, um, I know with my team that I work with in Arlington, we consult and coordinate with each other a lot, meaning we go to the different schools um, to see how something's working or not working. And we do a lot of buddying and partnership, meaning that the elementary team works a lot um, close with each other and ask a lot of questions. Middle school and the same thing for high school. We have our own listserv with each group so we can kind of communicate back and forth. We do our own texts, um, chats, so we can help each other out. Uh, this is key for us to constantly ask questions and we have an open mic, and I would say, to say, hey, if I got a question, I'm just going to ask it. We don't, um, we're not disrespectful. We don't laugh at each other um, because the simplest question to somewhere else may be a question that somebody didn't know to another person. So observation and going to schools. Also, it is very important to go to other schools to see how things work and how they run. Uh, the technology in your school may not work one way you need to go to another school and see who is using it and how they're using it uh it may just be a simple case of how the technology works on your school network your um infrastructure the devices being used uh, the process speed of a computer can change the whole world to a student and a teacher how fast that a um, browser or the hard drive is working and classroom observation Key, go to the schools, sit in the classroom, and also go into conferences. And we already answered that question, but I'll go back to it. Yeah, what kind of drone were the students flying? That drone is particularly is a um, Parrot drone. Uh, you can get those, like I said, at Amazon, uh, Best Buy, several stores sell them. But uh, doing drone piling for the students is something that they love to do. Um, that's their little lunch break. Also enjoy using Spiros which is the little um, balls that are Bluetooth connected that you can use within a smartphone to program. And that kind of engages the students in using coding, robotics uh, in their classroom and out the classroom. Again, just trying to make it fun for everybody. Uh, another question we have here. Given your experience, what is one thing you now know that you wish you knew when you were first years of, of or as a tech coach? Hmm. Interesting question. I would say something that I would have changed years ago or what I would implement it my first years was being able to actually breathe and plan. Um, my first couple of years, I was trying to be, quote unquote, a super superhero. Meaning I was trying to save everything, everybody, every moment. And what I have realized now is with the 10 years of being a, I'm shocking to say it as a veteran, a tech coach or a structural technology coordinator, is being able to pause for a minute, analyze the situation, and still do my best, but not realizing that I have to save that world or save that moment 100%. Um, because if you do that every second, every second, every second, you look up, you have not had a meal to eat, you have not thought about anything else, or taken a moment to reflect. 
Um, something I've used the last couple of years has really been having moments of time in my day to one, learn something new. Um, I think this is a Thomas Jefferson point of being able to take a moment or an hour every day of learning a new skill. Even if you're just studying, going online, reading, learn something different or try something new every day. Make an hour of professional development for yourself. If you don't, no problem. It doesn't work. But if you don't do it every day, at least try to do it every couple of days and have a set time like I highly recommend for your lunch and also for learning something new. Um, even if it's just researching, learn something new. Anybody have any other wonderful questions? Because this has been exciting and fun. Let's see, I'm reading some of the chats now. Yes, I have to say I love my system and network people because in my school system, we have to work as a team. Um, we kind of have a joint effort between as a structural technology coordinator, I'm in the schools. Then I have a network analyst who is my contact that I work with at on a personal level. Because if I have issues or software problems that or, or network problems, that person is my point of contact. So I need to talk to them and communicate with them. And then I also have a technician. So when it's hardware based issues that I can't resolve, I have a technician that I work with. So that's already three different groups between the instructional ed tech coach coordinator, my network analyst um, and my technician. And I also forgot my infra infrastructure and network person, meaning the Wi-Fi and hard internet. It's a key. We all work together. And this is a relationship when we must work together in order to get the school working fine. Uh, let's see here. Anything else? Keep on learning and definitely keep on attending those wonderful ISTE conferences. Uh, you look when you go, if you've ever been to those conferences, you look up on the stage and you see those people presenting and you be like, I'm not too sure if that's me. I don't know if I could do that. Trust me, you can be one of those people that's presenting and highlighting information to everybody. Um, I, this ISTE uh, EdTech coach went out early this year and they were asking for presenters. I met, I took a wonderful leap of faith and said, you know what, I'm going to put my application in. And I'm going to come up with a topic, which I didn't think would be a huge topic, but surprisingly it is. A lot of people want to know or want to understand what is the detailed information it takes to go in from a teacher to an ed tech coach. And I know it's only been one hour and we've covered a lot of topics, a lot of concepts, but having the passion to learn instructional technology and to teach teachers, students, parents, and admin is first and foremost. Um, and again, have fun. If you don't have fun, you're not going to have fun. And remember, reach for the stars because being happy at your job is key to everything. If you're not happy, what's the point? And love professional development. Uh, we're great chats, people are talking about how they got the nerve to present. Um, great feedback because unless you present and get yourself out there, um, it's amazing what you learn from other people once you do that. And the friends and colleagues that you will also be able to talk to, new people. Uh, ISTE this past year was great for me for presenting because I've met teachers that I have never met before, admin, and I met a lot of people on Twitter that I've seen, but I've never actually physically um, got to talk to. So going to ISTE, presenting at EdTech um, seminars and webinars is the thing to do. And trust me, you can do it. Yes, be calm. <laughs> be calm, self-reflecting is a key. And I know our wonderful time is almost wrapping up because it's also a school night, so I don't want to keep anybody up too late. And I truly appreciate everybody staying online tonight.
guys, if no one has any other questions, we do have a couple more minutes. Um, so feel free if you are still waiting on a question, um, submit it in that chat area. But if there are no further questions, we will go ahead and end the webinar tonight. Thank you so much for learning with us. Charles, thank you so, so much for being here. Looks like people are really excited and got a lot out of it. Um, I have on the screen right now, again, that link to continue connecting with us. We've shared the link in the chat to register for future webinars, and we will also be sending out a link to the recording for this webinar to everyone who registered, as well as the chat history. Um, so if there's any links in there that interested you, you can get them. So if there are no further questions, thank you so much, everyone, and have a great night. Thank you very much, everybody.